avec des actrices ou des acteurs américains. Et peut-être avant même d'avoir l'idée de faire un western, j'avais envie de travailler avec des Américains. Even before uh, the idea came to do make a western, uh, I wanted to work with American actors. Yeah, I guess it just felt um, it just felt uh, that there was something unique and different. I guess typically, I, mean, I don't really fucking know westerns, but m how how I think of them, I think of like characters that are always really stoic. And there was something about these characters where they had this really vibrant personalities. I think there was something interesting about that. I want to work with. Jack and John, and I wasn't doing anything else. I really enjoyed um, playing this character. I kind of got to learn a lot about what was going on at this time in America. And you know, it was like this really idealistic moment where lots of people were trying to set up communes. And it was almost like, you know, communism before communism. And all these people were coming over from Europe and starting all these kind of idealistic utopian societies, or at least trying to. So I, I learned a lot about that. And that was pretty interesting. And, kind of interesting how it resonated with um, you know what's happening in California now where there's like a different kind of gold rush happening and there's idealistic people you know in Silicon Valley going you know we can save the world and make a better tomorrow with our technology so it kind of felt very uh, relevant to today but also an opportunity to learn about yeah some stuff I didn't really know a lot about. Because in the book Mayfield was uh, a male character so I felt that it was a really wonderful opportunity for uh, a female voice uh, in this very macho world. Um, but there's something about my Mayfield, who is kind of you know, tough, and I, I kind of styled her a little bit on Margaret Thatcher, dare I say that? Um, you know, that's kind of a sort of authoritarian, yet you know, could be the, the, mother, of the, uh, the mother of the town. That, that is one of the more interesting things about the characters is like even though they look like these filthy brutes that are murderers for a living, which is what they are, <laughs> they're actually pretty well educated and they have these somewhat intellectual conversations all the time with each other. So um, I think they use that, that thing of a, judging a book by its cover to their advantage to, to always have the jump on people because <clears throat> people assume that they're less intelligent than they are. Kind of like me and Joaquin. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, yeah, so we just spent time together, really. That, that was, you know, Joaquin pointed out before, like these guys have spent their entire lives together. And since the time they left home, it's been really only the two of them. Every night, every ride, every meal. So we just, we had a lot of catching up to do. So we just tried to spend as much time together as possible. To me, very early in the process. Oui, ce sont des ce sont des durs, ce sont des des types qui sont guys, qui sont un peu, qui sont usés par la vie. They're worn out. Mais en fait, ce sont des enfants de 12 ans. But they are child. They are just our children, 12-year-old oh. children. I guess for me and Jake we're kind of joking it felt like a kind of sequel for us because, you know, we double act again and we're on the road, but instead of in a car we're in, on horseback. But um I guess it's, um, it's, I think it's interesting working with the same people again, you know, several times. You develop a kind of shorthand, some of that whole getting to know each other stuff you can just get past. Um, so that was, that was cool creatively, you know, just having a kind of common ground to start off with. But it, it was interesting in the way that the dynamic was kind of reversed almost from Nightcrawler, or at least it was a bit blurrier in terms of who was in charge or who was kind of guiding them. Um, I have to say, I, I kind of, um, I just loved this character, man. I really loved him. I thought he's someone who's just trying to make the world a better place, and he's such an optimist, and I think I can sometimes be a bit of a cynic, or at least a bit skeptical. I think that's like the British perspective, you know, it's a bit like, look at everything a bit skeptically. And so, I don't know if I felt like I related to him that much going into it, but by the end, I felt like, yeah, it can be a kind of nice way of looking at the world, you know, instead of seeing everything that's broken, looking at all the opportunities that there are to, to fix things and stuff. He's just someone who really cares uh, about trying to make a positive impact, and I guess that, you know, I tried to take that on. We had this great moment where Pat and his, some of his family came to visit us in Romania, and, and he said to me, you know what, John, it's, really, it's a really gratifying moment as a father, because his son was with him, to say, you know, for his son to be able to look on the set of the San Francisco set and see, like, Dad, all of this happened because you came up with an idea. You know, like, 
that's a that's a kind of a humbling moment for anybody, and uh, it was a special thing to share with Pat. That cinema is really about images. Écoute, c'est incroyable comme ça passe toujours, toujours, toujours par de l'écrit. And it's incredible how it always ends up being uh, a work of writing. Alors j'aurais tendance à dire à, à cette jeune femme ou ce jeune homme. Euh, so I would like to tell you, ben d'écrire. Write. Euh, I don't like these kind of questions, but I thought of something good to say while Jacques was talking, <laughs> while I didn't understand what he was saying. Um, <laughs> which is that, don't assume that there isn't a place for you in this world. There is. Right. There is. You, but you have to make it, right? You have to make your place in this world. I come from a background in Chicago where I looked at the movies like this foreign country. There was no place for me there. And just through trying and just... You know, staying optimistic and trying to put, you know, trying to grow as an artist or as an actor or as a human being, I, I found I made a place for myself at the table. We no. did one day of reading through the scenes, but it was almost obligatory just so we could say, <laughs> "All right, we've we've done our rehearsal. Can we get on with it now?" Like, what was the most uh, intimidating scene for you guys to shoot, especially like when you knew it was coming up? There's a lot of gunplay and crazy bar scenes and stuff. Everyone. <laughs> yeah, it was, there was, this was a very demanding film to make. Every day was kind, of, was kind of a challenge, you know? It wasn't like there was, a, I mean, there was many different dangerous things. There were many complicated things. Those horses are very Mais unpredictable, you know? Ils peuvent dire, enfin, j'étais tous les matins extraordinairement enthousiaste à l'idée de les rencontrer, soit par deux, soit par trois, soit par quatre. Franchement, ça m'est euh, très, très sincère. sincère. Parfois, j'étais fatigué, mais ils but sont tellement... J'adorais les voir le matin. L'après-midi, ça se gâtait. In the afternoon, it was different. But in the morning, it was... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, you guys Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!